Coming up, feeling the breeze. Hi, my name is Sam, and I'm four years old, and I want to talk about how wind blows from the air. We'll explain the science behind wind. Then Year of the Dragon, everything you need to know about the Chinese New Year. We're also celebrating Black History Month with a look at some pioneers and how you can learn more and words from the heart. I haven't seen you in so long. <laughs> we'll tell you what these students just did that moved their teachers to tears. When I needed extra help, you were the teacher that helped me. Plus, Elmo in the headlines. How a post from this beloved Sesame Street friend set the world ablaze. We'll hear from Elmo himself. Well, it's very important to check on your friends and see how they're doing, because maybe they're not doing okay, or maybe they are, but it's good to talk about it. And Puppy Bowl. It's Guy Ferretti who comes away with a toy. We've got a preview of the other big game taking place on Sunday, and every pup is a winner. Whoa, and a Lambone leap by Cookie. She is showcasing her athleticism out there. This is NBC Nightly News. Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt. Always great to be with you guys. Hope you're having a terrific week. We have an awesome lineup ahead. We'll be talking about American history, dumplings and dragons, Elmo, and of course the big game taking place this weekend. Well, the other big game in this case. We'll tell you about that. But let's begin with the weather and what's on your mind with all the storms and snow hitting the country lately. One young viewer sent in this question. Hi, my name is Sam, and I'm four years old, and I want to talk about how wind blows from the air. All right, well, Sam, thanks for that question. It's a good one. The wind is something all of us experience around the world, no matter where we live. For more on the wind, we asked our good friend and meteorologist Dylan Dreyer to explain. Sam, that's a great question. Wind is air in motion. It's produced by the uneven heating of the Earth's surface by the sun, which drives temperature changes. Wind is pretty amazing. It can change the shape of the land, move the clouds, help fly a kite, and even cause airplanes to fly faster or slower. Wind can also generate clean electricity and help a sailboat across the ocean. But sometimes the wind can be so strong and scary. Let's talk more about it. The sun warms the Earth's surface. The atmosphere warms too. Some parts of the Earth receive more direct rays from the sun and are usually warmer, such as the equator. Other places, like the North and South Poles, receive indirect rays, so the weather there is typically colder. Warm air weighs less than cold air and rises. Then cool air moves in and replaces the rising warm air. And this movement of air is what makes the wind blow. So what makes wind strong at times and weaker at others? Well, it all has to do with air pressure. Did you know we live at the bottom of the atmosphere and the weight of all the air above us is called air pressure. When the air pressure changes, so does the strength of the wind. Wind always blows from high pressure to low pressure areas to try and create a balance. The greater the difference in pressure, the greater the wind speed, especially when that pressure changes over a short distance. Sometimes the wind at the surface can be so strong that it becomes scary. There are many types of weather phenomena that produce high wind. For example, hurricanes and tornadoes or nor'easters and severe thunderstorms. These winds can be so strong, they can knock down trees and cause damage and sometimes power outages. By the way, did you know that the weather instrument used to measure wind speed is called an anemometer? That's a fun word to say. And guess what else? Wind can also play an important role in our lives. Wind is important and can supply one of the cheapest forms of clean energy in the world. Windmills can harness the power of the wind to create electricity. And best of all, the supply of wind is unlimited. 
Dylan, thanks so much. Always great explanations from you. Meantime, February is Black History Month, a time to celebrate the heritage and achievements of African Americans and those who light a spark in us. They are pioneers, legends, icons in history who we celebrate for paving the way for some of the freedoms we enjoy today. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. I, Kamala Davy Harris, do solemnly swear. Here at the Reginald F. Lewis Museum, we believe two things, that black history is important every month of the year and that black history is actually American history. There are a lot of contributions that black Americans have made to this country that taking that out of the equation, it's a lot of things we wouldn't have. There were those who led by example and showed immense bravery, like Harriet Tubman, who escaped slavery and helped others escape to freedom back in the 1800s, and civil rights leaders like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Heroes like the Tuskegee Airmen, the first black military aviators in the U.S. Army Air Corps, who broke barriers and ushered in change in America. Pioneers in business. When it comes to black history, I adore Madam C.J. Walker. Her story uh, from rags to riches is one that we can all really learn some critical uh, lessons about our character. Madam C.J. Walker's drive and her dedication to her goal of designing her own beauty products and sharing it with the world um, really underscores the importance of perseverance and dedication. Scholars in science. George Washington Carver was a famous agricultural scientist and botanist. Giants in sports and legends on the big and small screen and beyond. This year, the theme for Black History Month is a focus on African Americans and arts and culture. And so you'll find a lot of social media spaces that are highlighting this huge contribution that African Americans have made to the arts and cultural scene. February is Black History Month, but educators, historians, and even journalists like me encourage kids of all ages and skin colors to do their own homework year round. But it's to help you have a greater level of connection and concern about your fellow classmates, the folks that you'll see on the street, your neighbors, and maybe that will spur you to want to be different and make a change. Well, many families around the world will be celebrating an important holiday soon, the Chinese New Year. It begins on February 10th, and it's the Year of the Dragon. We get details now from our friend Janice Mackey Freyer in China. It's the biggest, most important holiday of the year in China, the Chinese New Year, when there are fireworks and lion dances, loads of food and red decorations. It's also called the Lunar New Year, and for days after, it's the Spring Festival. The dates change according to the phases of the moon. This year, the Chinese New Year begins on February 10th. For two weeks, there's no school or online classes. The dry flower. Food is super important to the New Year. When relatives young and old get together over feasts, sometimes families make hundreds of dumplings. You have to make sure it's seal well, yeah? and your dumpling is actually made. And guess what? The Lunar New Year isn't just in China. It's celebrated in South Korea, Singapore, Vietnam, and other countries in Asia, and in the US too. Did you know that each year is represented by one of 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac, like dog, rooster, snake, or rabbit? This year, say hello to Year of the Dragon, considered to be the luckiest of all signs in the Chinese zodiac. Traditionally, the dragon is meant to symbolize strength and power. It's also associated with good fortune, wisdom, and success. Those born in the year of the dragon are said to demonstrate leadership and be energetic. There's always lots of red for the Chinese New Year because red is a lucky color here. People wear red clothes and decorate with red lanterns. Red lanterns has always been a, a you know, very important source of hope. So when you come home, you see a red lantern on your doorway. It always feels very welcoming. 
Nearly every Red Lantern in the country has come from one village. It's literally the Red Lantern capital of China. Most are made by hand, pulling fabric over a wire frame that's sort of shaped like a pumpkin. This one factory is hand making 4,000 lanterns a day. Then they add gold ribbon and Chinese characters like Xi for happiness. The best part of the Chinese New Year for some kids, the red envelopes given to them called Hong Bao. Money, 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 money. hundred money. It's considered lucky money. At first, you're supposed to refuse it, then it becomes a bit of a game, and then you take it. And if you want to wish somebody a happy new year, Here's hoping your year of the dragon is a happy one too. All right, Janice, thank you. Now to our picture of the week. One of our favorite furry friends, Elmo, is making headlines for asking one very simple question posted on social media. And what happened next was unexpected. Let's get details from our friend, Emily Aketa. Elmo loves you. With his unmistakable voice and warmth and understanding. Everybody feels lots of emotions like happy, sad, surprised, and frustrated. Elmo has touched countless lives for more than four decades. And last week, that connection proving stronger than ever. Well, it's very important to check on your friends and see how they're doing because maybe they're not doing okay. Or maybe they are, but it's good to talk about it. Our favorite furry friend reacting on the Today Show to the wave of emotional venting on social media when he posted nine simple words. Elmo is just checking in. How is everybody doing? Thousands opened up with the good and bad. Even President Biden weighed in, saying our friend Elmo is right. We have to be there for each other, offer our help to a neighbor in need, and above all else, ask for help when we need it. Adding, even though it's hard, you're never alone. Elmo, alongside his proud dad, Louie, says he's glad he asked. 40,000 responses. We don't even know how to count that high yet, do we? That's right. The surprising response prompting Sesame Street to post resources for emotional well-being. All thanks to a heartfelt check-in straight from... Elmo's wonderful world! Emily, thanks. And Elmo, big thanks to you for checking in on us. It goes a long way. All right, time for our pop quiz. With Valentine's Day just days away, the question this week, true or false? Lovebirds are a real bird species. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, time's up. The answer is true. Even though the term lovebirds is used as a figure of speech, it's also the common name for a type of small parrot. Lovebirds are known for their bright colors and their tendency to pair up in twos, forming devoted couples for life. Well, the Super Bowl is set to take place on Sunday in Las Vegas. The Kansas City Chiefs will play the San Francisco 49ers. But there's another big game taking place this weekend, and the players hail from all across the country. Officials are expecting the matchup to be action-packed, highly competitive, and super cute. And in this game, there are no losers. Every player, paws and all, are winners. You know where this is going. Our friend Aaron McLaughlin has the story. It's a super lineup with some possum appeal. It's Guy Ferretti who comes away with a toy. These players all competing in this year's 20th anniversary of the Puppy Bowl. This is our puppiest of all puppy bowls. You guessed it, more pups than ever before. The lineup is the biggest yet, featuring 131 puppies from 73 animal shelters and rescues across 36 states and territories. Let the Puppy Bowl begin. The Puppy Bowl is a miniaturized football game played on Super Bowl Sunday in sort of celebration of the fact that it's America's day to watch football, except instead of humans playing it, we have puppies. And every single one of our puppies are up for adoption. We have two-time champs, Team Fluff led by offensive genius coach Kyle Shanahan and a hungry team rough, commandeered by longtime coach Nick Furiani. The stakes could not be higher as these two teams prepare to go head to head for the world championship. That's right, as Team Rough and Team Fluff go head to head, audiences can help these pups get adopted. We have to be between three and six months of age and be up for adoption. 
and be untrained. We don't want any puppies that are like perfectly behaved. We want to see puppies in all their chaotic glory. The roster includes more than 10 dogs named after food, including all-star team rough player Cookie. Whoa, and a lambone leap by Cookie. She is showcasing her athleticism out there. And representing Team Fluff is the one and only Patrick Mabones, named, of course, after the Kansas City Chiefs quarterback. Patrick Mabones was rescued by a Heinz 57 Pet Rescue, a shelter that has been participating in the Puppy Bowl for 12 years. When we first got that call, we were adopting out about 100 dogs every year. And now we adopt out about 1,500 dogs every year. And we're so proud to represent the Puppy Bowl and have our dogs represented in it. Down on the field, our cheerleading squads, Ruff and Tail Mary Tangerine and Fluff and Bark Blue are hyping up the crowd. And behind the scenes, our talented puppy crew. And for the first time ever, pups are helping out behind the scenes. Every possible role is filled with, an, with a dog. Puppy camera people, puppies in the control room, puppy taking pictures in the backstage, they are our paparazzi. Folks, Dan the ref is on the field with Whistle, his puppy assistant referee from Phoenix Animal Rescue in Pennsylvania, who Dan is also fostering. Okay, Whistle, don't be nervous. Remember your training, you got this. Whistle, assistant to puppy bull referee Dan Schachner, even ended up becoming part of his family. I've been fostering dogs for 10 years, and for the people who may not know what it is, is a great option if you're unsure about adopting or can't adopt. And I was just kind of like waiting around to see like, well, whenever the right fit happens, it'll happen. And when I brought her home, my family and I were just looked at each other and we're like, this is the one, right? It was the perfect time. And, um, you know, she doesn't even quite realize how she's gonna uh, impact people. Aside from these pups being so doggone cute, the Puppy Bull's main mission is to raise awareness for animals and shelters in need and find these dogs their forever homes. You save the life of that dog that you're adopting. And when you save one life, you are actually saving two because that frees up a spot for another dog to come in. It'll be worth it. It'll be a dog, you know, that is gonna be so grateful to have a home. Listen, I know you're almost there. These puppies scoring touchdowns of their own and hoping to bring their own team spirit to an important cause. Okay, Aaron, thanks very much. Those puppies are adorable. The Puppy Bowl, by the way, airs Sunday on Animal Planet. Finally, in our inspiring kids series, a story about the power of gratitude and the meaningful way students at one Michigan school surprise their former teachers. Let's get details from our friend Kate Snow. Proofread it, stop by my room. At Roseville Middle School near Detroit, They've put a new twist on a big idea started last year by coach and reading teacher Stacy Earl. It's perfect. The teachers and staff at one school honoring their students in profoundly moving ways. You light up our classroom with your kindness. <laughs> Back then, we showed you what happened when teachers wrote letters of thanks to students. If we finish, we get Now, the students are taking a turn. These sixth graders going back to their elementary school to thank their former teachers. I haven't seen you in so long. <laughs> when I needed extra help, you were the teacher that helped me. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, honey. How are you? You taught me so much stuff about middle school, and you were right. It gets hard sometimes. Hi, honey. Olivia Collins had teacher Janice Litz for kindergarten. Without you, I wouldn't be where I am now. Me and my siblings are all very appreciative of you. Oh, honey. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I can't believe you remember me. Mm -hmm. This is for you. Oh, thank you. That is so sweet. You cry. Thank you, honey. I was happy to be your student, and I'm still to this day grateful for having a teacher like you. You are the reason I wake up with a smile on my face. Sincerely, Asher. Kim. Oh, honey, that is so sweet. Thank you. Can I give you a hug? Oh, thank you. You just made my whole day. More than 50 heartfelt handwritten letters in all. Mm, I don't want, I don't, I'm not letting her go. Each card leading to thank hug. You so much. Can I hug you? Thank you. I appreciate that. After hug. 
Thanks. Thank you for being a meaningful here. lesson on the power of gratitude. Oh, here he comes. Second grade teacher Jen Sakala has been an educator for more than 30 years. I felt safe in your class. It was the only class I felt safe in. Thank you, DJ. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. You know, you made me cry when you played your instrument because you were so talented. I was, when I saw that concert, I was touched. You were amazing. Thank you. This is a hard, difficult job. You put a lot of time, effort, emotions into it. And when somebody appreciates it, it feels good. Quit making me cry. <laughs> It's these precious moments that Stacy Earl hopes students and staff here will remember forever. Probably the bigger message that I would like everybody to understand or know that you can change a person's life with a small use of words. It's very simple. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, Kate, thanks so much. And speaking of gratitude, we want to take a moment to say thank you to one of our dear colleagues and friends, Kristen Dahlgren. Kristen has been a part of the NBC family for nearly three decades and an important part of Nightly News Kids Edition since the program started back in 2020. Since then, Kristen has helped us report, About inform, educate, and inspire our viewers. Way, Canada, a lot of you have one big question. I know the biggest question that a lot of kids have is, is it going to hurt? It will be very quick. What you have to realize is we need to do this so that we don't end up getting really sick. Did you know in the very first elections held in this country, voting was done by voice? No secrets there. Hey guys, I am so excited to show you something. Take a look at what's happening on my porch here. Some birds are building a nest. This is the time of year when a lot of them head back up north after spending the winter down south. So one city along the way is doing something pretty simple to make sure they have a safe trip. When it's hot, they call it the dog days of summer. So this beach in Maine is taking that quite literally. Go. Meet Beacon and Bowie, the first and only lifeguard dogs in the U.S. I have these guys being trained as second responders now. What's the benefit of having a dog do that? She can pull in three to five people at a time. Wow. Across New England every summer, <laughs> amazing circus feats. Wow, the crowds. But these aren't lifelong circus performers, they're kids. So I'm majoring in hula hoop. Majoring in hula hoop. I, know, I love that. Funny. My daughter Cece was so impressed with the show, she's thinking of how she can join someday. What's your advice to kids who want to do it? Um, I would just say to that, be brave. What keeps you coming back? People is a big one. I love everybody here. Kristen, we wish you the best of luck in your next adventure. Thank you, my dear friend. Well, that's going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com, and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long. <laughs>